Welcome back to the reddest county in America, the Red Dirt Riviera, also known as... or... Well, I, I, it's hey, you know what? I, it's the red dirt. We're is, definitely not the reddest county. This is uh, this is this is red dirt Riviera. It's red, baby. but it's not. It's on fire. That red. It's uh, it's hot. It's it's growing and just booming in red dirtedness. Everything has red dirt. It's the red dirt Riviera. Houses, they their sprinkler systems spray paint their houses with red dirt. It, this is this is the reddest red place. We've ever the dirt been. is red. Anyway, it's actually it's, soil. Oh, stop with that! It's true. I know. I know. I got. It's a it. university town. We are a learned people. <laughs> Educated, I think, is we the phrase. Right? Know our stuff. <laughs> well, welcome, uh, welcome back to another installment of the Pastors of Pain. Yes, yes. I have some trivia for you. Oh no, 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 no. Ready? Oh, I, I don't. I wait. Really? You're just gonna pose this on me? I'm gonna give you a couple tri- pieces of trivia about Stillwater. Okay, go ahead. How many total square miles is Stillwater? Total square miles. I'm gonna go with. Uh, let's go with 850. That's a lot of square miles. I don't know. It's 30 square miles. Oh, okay. I think this town's bigger. Is that does that include the interchange uh, on the south end of town and the new I don't n- know. new stuff? The, put the, the, the Stillwater city limits. Oh, I think they should expand. Uh, okay, them. two more. What is the highest recorded temperature in Stillwater ever? One fourteen. Oh, I'm sorry, it's one fifteen. Oh, that was 1936. Oh, what about the most rainfall? Is that on there? Mm, um. Ooh, ooh. Two more. What is the elevation of Stillwater? Uh, I I know it's uh it's like nine hundred eight feet. Nine eighty four. Very close. Well, yeah. Because uh, go ahead. Yeah. Because uh, the uh, when uh, they're designing our our landscape for our church. Oh, it's, so you got it's nine oh three nine oh three to nine oh one. Oh, okay. But then um then there's that what's that store downtown next to Aspen that has their logo and it says like it's got the elevation right below it. The Rocky Mountain, the chocolate place? <laughs> the Rocky Mountain chocolate place. I don't know. No, I asked the wrong person. It's a camping store. Oh, I I don't camp. <laughs> I know you don't camp. I asked the wrong person. Anyway, I bought my chocolate. Everyone there. used to camp until they invented the house. <laughs> um, okay, final question. That's from Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Um, how many pounds of potatoes does Eskimo Joe's go through every week? Whoa. Okay, I'm going to look at So Eskimo Joe's, famous restaurant here in town. When people come, they yep. want to go there. They, I mean, they, 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 they do have good cheese fries. They do. They're the potatoes. They're good. I How many g- pounds of potatoes? Eskimo Joe's every week. I'm going to go with 1,000. 6,000. Stop. Really? That's a I lot just, of... You know, hey, there it is. It's cool. Wow. Uh, that's a lot of That's potato- a lot of potatoes in one little... That's a lot of food going little, into people's bellies. Corner of the world. Hold on, let me take a sip of my coffee. Real quick. Um, so it is September. Do you um, remember? It's I a do. great. It's a great time of year because you know, kind of football for here at least. Football season's in swing. The weather is getting a little cooler. Uh, I think people are in kind of routines. You know. Yep. There's a little routine going on. Um, so it's just kind of not we're not we're never on cruise control, especially when we're trying to evangelize, right? You're always no. You always got to be vigilant. Yes, sir. Gotta always be our head on a swivel, looking for the people, <laughs> shepherding, shepherding out shepherding there, shepherding and looking for looking for new people. And uh-huh. uh huh. That's especially like after oh man after Sunday mass. Oh yes. Remember we did a show early on. It made some people mad. I think it's our most controversial show called. Annoying things our people do. Oh, but also, pa- ba- we have to bring a back by popular demand. Demand annoying things that priests do. Yeah, that would be. And that, someone then, wants we, to, then we did a show called "Annoying Things Priests Do." People want to write in. That was more also stuff. very, po- very popular. <laughs> more popular than the other. So, um, one of the things annoying things people do is uh, people who like have sounds funny, but like have access to us throughout the week, but like monopolize. Your time, Sunday, right when, after mass, as hundreds of people are walking by exactly. that you've never met. Uh huh. Oh boy. Because uh, that's when I got my head on a swivel, and I'm, you know, you're looking, you're looking for 
new people, people you haven't seen in a while. Right. Yep. Um, even a chance to like kind of greet visitors or maybe you know uh-huh. always a lot, a lot of, of people, townies. especially you. Like you're looking at there's a lot of you know high school seniors there with their parents. You you want to talk to them and encourage them Agreed. to come yes, to OSU sir. and St. John's and anyway, it's one of those things. Head on a swivel. If you could see us right now, you would see my head <laughs> going back and forth. Are you doing back uh, and forth? You're like uh, uh, doing <laughs> neck exercises over there. <laughs> uh, okay, so Father Kerry said something to me a couple weeks ago. Uh oh, what was very Can interesting. I guess? Can it was I guess? Very, no, I hate it when you guess. Come on. It was, it was super, super, <laughs> hate super it when you guess. interesting. Oh. He said he said something, and then this has also been confirmed by other college chaplains. Oh, yes. And I think it is worthy of discussion. And I think there will not necessarily be definitive answers thrown down, as it I think perhaps has plagued college chaplains. For many generations. Oh. oh I, Okay, so here it is as I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Please, go when on. When the school year begins, oh, yes. uh-huh. there is an initial, uh, how should I say, fervor. Oh, oh yes. People like, come, think of it as like a new, your New Year's resolution. Like January 1st, everyone's working out. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're trying to cut kilos. Nobody's smoking on January 1st. Or second. Everyone's eating healthy. Third. Everyone January is 4th. exercising. January right. 5th? Everyone is nice to each other. Everyone calls their mom on January 1st. People call me on January 2nd. So that's your yeah. birthday. Oh, yes, that is true. Uh, yeah, there is. A, you're right. There is that so like, there's New a Year's. Fervor. I, yeah, Think I'm of gonna... it like, Ash, like Lent, beginning of Lent. Nobody drinks coffee. <laughs> right? Nobody's, no, nobody's, all the kids are giving up, you know, don't eat chocolate for those few, first couple days. Everybody stops cussing. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. then... The fervor wears off, mm. and it becomes a little harder. Sad day. It becomes a little harder, right? Yep. So Father Kerry was saying that one phenomenon that happens at, at OSU, and, oh. and I'm told other places. It happened to you, and I thought it was a, my fault. There's, an, a, there's a fervor at the beginning of the year, a lot of people coming to Mass, and then Labor Day. Yeah. Labor Day happens. That's and right. And then... There's a drop off. Now, are people still coming to mass? Heck uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Are you still yeah, you're still you're still busy. There's still confessions. There's still adoration. But there aren't as many people who came as like the first weekend. Oh, the choir loft at Old St. Francis was full. Yeah. Standing room only in the church. So one could say, Well, Father Kerry, you stink at being a priest. Uh, and yeah, so people came be, um, people came to Mass. And they did not like you. That 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 used to get me my first my first two years at TU. So I, I remember you said that you, that you said you used to think it was your fault. Yeah, I was like, what did I do? But like, if I, you notice a pattern across you know across the country, not every college priest chaplain is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, just some, just some are. No one in this room. Excluding present company. You present looked company right at excluding. me when you said that. Well, you're the only other person in the room. I can't look. I'm not gonna look. Look at, look at JRDJ. I'm looking up in the corner. Uh, don't make eye contact. Not, not don't make every eye contact. college priest is terrible. So I thought it would be worthy to both challenge uh, those uh, students who are listening to maybe provide uh, an answer. But I just thought maybe you could offer, what, what, do, you, what do you think? Over over my last uh, ten years of working in college uh, ministry, I've, d- I've I've noticed this trend, and I've spoken with a couple of priests at K State and KU and LSU, and just anybody I know that is in this world. Uh, Father Drew Hoffman up at Wichita State in Wichita, Kansas. It's just like the Arkansas River. You know, they say Arkansan River, and they mean Arkansas, and I call it Wichita, and they get annoyed by it. Sure, they do. I love it. Anyway. It, and the show it's cares. This, it's this. It's the first three weeks of school. It's just busting at the seams, and then Labor Day comes and it drops off dramatically. So I, I think a couple of things is is one is that you know parents came with them to school. They arrived that first weekend. <laughs> yeah, they showed up at school and and their parents were like, "Let's go to mass." So there's this there's an initial like. I think hostage Catholicness, where you're a, <laughs> you're a hostage Catholic and you're coming to church because your mom and dad brought you there. 
and they're going to take you out to breakfast afterwards, mm. and they're going to drop you off and leave you, mm. and then voila. Granny's. Mm. Jimmy's egg. Uh, what? What? Grant? Granny's? Granny's? Jimmy's egg? For Short, breakfast. Shortcakes, baby. Oh, shortcakes. Shortcakes is a win in Still this never town. Been to shortcakes. Oh, you and I got to go. It's amazing. Anywho, then, so then there's that. And then they're, they're fervent for those couple, those two or three weeks. And I think one thing happens during that time frame. They, they start doing things at night on Saturday. And then they can't oh, get they up can't to go. They can't handle it. They, they don't, if they're going to party like a rock star, you got to worship like a rock star. But come on. You have a 4 p.m. Sunday mass. Oh, I, I agree. So, I mean, come on. No, you can have the, the, the rockinest Saturday night of your life. Mm -hmm. You can get home at 2 a.m., sleep for 13 hours, <laughs> and still make it to the 4 p.m. Yeah, I, I know. They, 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 they got their uh, new ID that was made in China that says they're from Baltimore, Maryland, <laughs> and they took it down to Hawaii. Uh -oh, Hawaii. They took it down to College Bar, and it got rejected there. They got nervous, so they went to J.R. Murphy's. And oh, that, we should name names. Uh, yeah, they they just wander down the strip, and they hit all these little places. And while they're going to all these little places, they they have you know they get they have fun, and then they can't get up on Sunday morning. So that's I think that's one group. The the Sunday morning, I just. I had a really wild time Saturday. Uh, two, I think they're, they they no longer have somebody to go to church with, and they're out of their routine, and they're out of their comfort zone. And, and I get that. And so I, I like, connect students together. I think together. that's legit. Yep. I connect students together. I was like, hey, I want you to go to a mass with this person. Okay, I can do that, Father. Yeah, you're in the same dorm, same fraternity, mm -hmm. same sorority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah all, all that. So there's there's that in the first week. Then there's also this, I think there's this sort of, like, no one else is going to church. Why should I go? There's no one. There's uh, none I don't of my, find that compelling. None, none of my friends on my floor, or none of my friends in my friend group, or none of the guys in my pledge class, or none of the girls in my sorority are going. So why would I go? Uh, or they get, or they get made fun of because they're Christians. Like why? Really? Would you, yeah. Does like, that happen? Oh, sure it does. Come on. Sure it does. It's like why? Why would you do this? This is stupid. Uh, or mm. the, or I think there's That's also this, and this is what I, I think of one of the benefits of moving our mass time from five to four mm. is that they would get together to go to dinner and they would say, well, I, I they're afraid to say I have to go to church because they're going to miss out on this friend event. The, all well, these people are going to go that. out and have dinner on a Sunday night and you're the one left out because you have to go to church. So it's like, okay, why would I go to church then? Uh. Uh, it, it, so now that it's 4 p.m., students are coming to mass and then going to dinner together. I, okay, another, I'm down with that. Another thing that uh, that I think happens during that this time frame is they say, "Why am I going to church? I don't believe in this stuff anyway." Oh, wow, that's so, not so. Good. Maybe they've been going to mass all their life, or they've been you know Christians all their life, and they've gone through religious education. They studied the scriptures. They received the sacraments. Yet they, as we talked about last week in salvation history, they've never heard the story of salvation history and why Jesus is important. They've never had that, um, as Pope Benedict said during the year of faith, and then Pope Francis picked it up, that encounter that the Holy Spirit has stirred in your heart and you have responded with an affirmation of, yes, I want to have faith. I believe. I believe. Credo. I believe. They don't know that story and they've never said like, I actually believe. And, and maybe it's like they've said, yes, I believe in little bitty ways along the way. Or they've never said, you know, I believe. I've, you know, I've had the Holy Spirit, the, the gift of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ. I've had that, the Holy Spirit enter my heart. And I, I know that this is truly God, even though I've never seen him face to face. I, I believe. And they've never had that moment. And I, I would say, like, if you ask me at the age of 18 through, you know, like, 16 through 20, I would say, I have had these little bitty experiences along the way, but I never had that moment where I said, yeah, you know what? I notice God working in my heart, and I, I believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. I believe that God yeah. created this universe 13 billion something years ago. Yeah. I, I believe this. And so now I'm going to live 
a life according to this life of faith that's been given to me. I'm going to start living this life of love that I've met. I, and so now that I think those are the reasons why that initial three weeks is like, why, why would I, why would I do this? I mean, the reason why I, I went to church when I was in boot camp was you got to wash, t- you was either clean toilets or go to church. Hmm. Difficult. Yeah. Difficult decision right there. Yeah. Difficult decision, but you know, it was easy. I went wow. to church. And, and then I went, you know, I would go to church so, because yeah, I had students friends. students at OSU have options. If you're not at church, you're... Sleeping in. You can sleep. You're out having you breakfast. You can do homework. You can see friends. Uh-huh. You can go home. You can you're do, just waffling for brunch. You can do some a friends. lot of things besides yeah. go to church. Yep. So Labor Day. Labor Day marks this moment. Yeah, what is that? When there's usually like a... Uh, uh, some sort of like, I'm going home and you go home and, or you go on a trip with some friends or you go do these things that weekend. And so the mass attendance drops by about half. By half? Yes. And it comes up by a little, it, it rises back a little bit the next weekend, but not that much. It just, and it goes on throughout uh, the United throughout the United States, because I, I think th- so. What happens after Labor Day is la- somewhere around Labor Day is like Parents' Day or Family Day. Dad's Day. Dad's Day was uh, this year, and so was the weekend after Labor Day. Was the weekend after Labor Day. So then you have Dad's Day. So you had Labor Day, which you had a day off, and so you didn't do your homework on that day. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. you're bo- and then you realize, oh shnikes, I have procrastinated on all of this homework. So now I got to get it done because I got midterms coming up in two or three weeks. So like, you know, midterms was the last week and into this week. Wow. (laughs) Midterms already. What? So now they're just, there's this crunch time and then homecoming, especially here in Stillwater. So something has to give. Something has to give like um, pomping and building yard decks here in Stillwater. I loved, we had our priest group a couple weeks ago and we had to explain to the non-Stillwater people what pomping is. Yes. I, I, I honestly did when I moved here. You had to explain it to me. Yeah. I, well, the only reason I did it is because some of the KDs let me into their house to watch pomping that, If on. you're not familiar, you can look up pomping. Uh-huh. Yes. If, <laughs> and, and be amazed. <laughs> uh, yes. It, I mean, it's pretty cool. It, it just, brings a lot of tourism to Stillwater and people show stress. up. Yes. And so now these, you know, people have to do 20 hours of pomping a week and that plus procrastination plus TikTok kitten videos, um, or whatever you got. Oh, sorry, Jay. Excluding present company. <laughs> so there's you all of these things. TikTok kitten video. Yeah, there's all these events going on that are then siphoning time off your life. So then when it comes to Sunday, you know, it, it, there's just no there's no free time for anybody. You start to put all those things together, and you're like, okay, no wonder. So what, uh, I mean, obviously it's happening across the country. What is the, what is the pastoral strategy to combat the great exodus that is Labor Day weekend? Um, okay, so pastoral strategy is a couple things. Is l- doing something like this to let um, families... And other priests know that when kids come to college, they're losing their faith. So then maybe they're like, hey, you know what? I want to do something with these eighth eighth graders. Yes, it makes the yeah, eighth graders through seniors. School, high school. Yeah. What what kind of so I mean to priests and well, let's start with parents to parents. Yes. Who are the primary educators of their children and to priests and anyone who works in the church that are what we are offering to pre-college people of whatever age from one to 18 yep. has to be better. We need to form students in the home and in the parish better so that when they come to college, the slightest distraction doesn't throw them. Yeah. They need to know the stories of salvation history. And, and, and like we talked about yeah, last week. Yeah, exactly. They need to know that story and they're like, oh my gosh, that my, my kids can't, can't, can't learn that. Well, you know what? Yes, um, they know the story of Harry Potter. 
they can tell you every character in Star Wars. Uh, exactly. I, w- one um, on occasion, this uh, this kid explained to me Lord of the Rings. I can and name he, every member of the 1986 Mets. Go. <laughs> I mean, that's what you did. Remember that time I walked? I, you, I was st- literally standing in the kitchen. And I and I said to myself, Wakulich, this is a really great time to test O'Brien's baseball. I had just woken up, and it was five thirty in the morning. And I said, and it was a little bitty article about the size, the size of like a half of a cell phone. And I had a picture of this guy, and it had his name, and it had some interesting facts, but I didn't read them. And I said, Who is Greg Gagne? I said, Who's Greg Gagne? And you said, Greg Gagne is. He was a, re- a closer for the L.A. Dodgers. And then I said, huh. And you said, and he wore these really funny glasses. Yeah, he had like a... Yeah, <laughs> and, and, it's, of, and so Greg Gagne, there yeah, he was, he had, this little picture, and he had these really <laughs> weird glasses on. And I thought, this guy seriously does know everything about baseball from the 80s and 90s. Uh, yeah. And so... Greg Gagne. It, oh, there's a debate going on here between a Bostonian Houston and an Illinois Chicagoan of how to pronounce the guy's name. Anywho, but w- people can know the story of salvation. They can know all these names. They can learn all these things. It's like, why? Why didn't we? Why don't we teach these to people? Why don't we teach them the story of salvation and the creed of what we believe? So one, that. Um, two, uh, I think you know, parents make a little visit up to uh, your kid's college. Go and visit them and yep. and take them to mass yep. and. Show them that you worship the Lord, that you pray, that you are a man and woman of faith as well. Share your faith with them. And I and I think when you do that. Oh, it was Eric Gagne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it was that guy. But there was also Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne. Yeah. Eric Gagne was the reliever for the Dodgers. Greg, Gagne, Greg Gagne, spelled the same, was an uh, outfielder for the Twins in the 80s. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Are you, you got all this? Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Uh, our, yeah. We don't need a call-in show Jay's because like we got our, Jay over he's here. He's like the, uh, the guy who, uh, what do they call that? The uh, oh the guy who heckles comedians? Well, the, uh, <laughs> the, error, the fact checker. The, the fact, fact checker. checker. Oh, fact checker. Oh, yeah. And, and so, one, parents can make a little visit and just say, hey, Let's go to let's go to church together. Tell me about your faith ask after a, Labor Day. Yeah, ask ask your kids about their faith. Ask them about their their church. You know, it was really cool that um, that kid you said a couple weeks ago brought their dad to Sunday uh-huh. five. I don't know mass, who she was. Yeah, Saturday five p.m. mass, yep. and then said, "Hey, I want to show you my church." And like student brought dad. Yep, and um, and then didn't even say for mass. They they came the next right. day. So just beautiful moments. Yeah, so there are yeah, so there's some there are some pastoral strategies, but I would say yeah, part of it because there are you you most certainly have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students for whom yeah. Labor Day changes nothing. Correct. They were fervent in the practice of their Catholic faith before Labor Day and are fervent in the practice of their faith after Labor Day. So it's not necessarily something special about Labor Day, but it's like the first break in the year. It's when things kind of get a little busier. Uh, it's when procrastination uh-huh. catch, catches up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we need to do is the faith needs to be implanted deeper into the hearts of our young people so that a, a, a break or extra homework or a fraternity, uh, uh, you know, obligation does not derail them from going to mass. That's right. So, I mean, at St. John's, there's mass at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Correct. So morning people, you have an option. Yep. Evening people, you have an option. Correct. One adults. There's room. There's not, you can't, you wouldn't walk in and say too crowded. That's right. So I, I would also tell students that, that, what I what I then think is the fault of students is that uh, you know I, I always use that line from C.S. Lewis. So he says, "Don't get them to commit murder when cards will do the trick." 
You know, it's that line that um, Uncle Screwtape is yeah. having with his uh, that letter with his Screwtape nephew. letters. Yeah, yeah. He says, "Don't get them to commit murder when cards will do the trick." It's like, don't get them um, to do blank when TikTok or video games. Like, people just drown their minds much. in these things. It doesn't they take did, much they in did, this world. That's right. And and is is the mind is the mind being used for what it's made for, which is to to think and to will. Um, to receive passion input, to to even have the mind lift up to heavenly things to produce things. Uh, just that like beautiful encounter with nature to start asking those questions like, does God exist? And if, if you come to the answer of, no, I don't think God exists, then you better have a good reason why. Uh, or if you say God does exist, then Ooh, you should have a yeah, good reason why. Yeah. To, you, to think about these things and then to... Like, uh, what is that? Um, uh, Everybody's got a hungry heart. Who's that guy? The musician? Bruce Springsteen. Thanks, Jay. Wow. <laughs> Jay's coming in handy today. It is good to have a uh, radio DJ. I looked at, oh, I looked at you, O'Brien, and you just blanked out. I mean, him. I know the song. I just didn't. I would have had to. Yeah, yeah, I would the, have had to sing it into my phone. Right. Everybody's got a hungry heart. And and that and we all I still do. Haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> we're right. We're right. But what do we? It takes two to make everything go right. <laughs> Wait, what? No, that's what? The, okay. that's I, that, I think. Uh, scoop. There it is. <laughs> Man, well, there's a lot of product placement in the show today. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and so there is a desire in every person's heart. You know, the catechism even begins that God infinitely perfect and blessed in Himself and a plan of sheer goodness freely created man and woman to share in his own blessed life and by means of this god calls man and woman to seek him seek him to know him and to love him that that's what we're all we're all doing now uh, do people drown their lives in things and basically just cover over the ability to seek to know and to love god who created them yeah and so i think there's a, a part on on them now uh, there's a, now there's a part on me too. Like, I have to be a pastor that goes out and looks for lost sheep. I mean, it's not just like it's not it's not the parents, it's not the the parishes over there. It's not boom, 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 just go down the list. Like, I have to be willing to go out and search for the lost sheep yep. of the house of Wakulich. Yep. I mean, the lost sheep of the house of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. And 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 invite them back. Yeah, so I'll, like a couple of days a week, I have a little, I have a little office at Kyle O'Clock uh, at the Union, and so I'm there for like three hours, and I run into students all the time, and students stop by and talk, and people come and have breakfast. You're there and, every week at that. Same. It's it, there's different days, different days that I'm there, but I'm there usually like between two and three hours, and I sit there and I work. I mean, like I did it a couple of weeks ago, and I made 14 phone calls before 10 a.m. Both to students I was looking for, construction meetings, you know, uh, our bells going into the church. It's all sorts of stuff. Donors. And you see people along the way. And I see people along the way. And I'll turn around and there'll be like 10 or 15 students sitting around there. And then 10 minutes later, there's no one. And if you're really got a good breeze coming from the south, you can smell the sewage system coming out of the union. Because you can tell when classes end. Because all the toilets flush oh, about the same time, the and the sewage goes down well, you there. You really do know the campus, don't oh, you? Oh, bro, I do. Especially if wow. you're up, if you're upwind, and you got a nice south tailwind, it's good just to blows know. right good across to know. the I think I'll stay commons. off campus. Uh, so basically, I just have this to say: Labor Day is our enemy. <laughs> no, is that true? It's not our enemy. Oh. But uh, it's not our enemy. It's not helping the cause. We, we need we need a, a a super awesome beautiful dose of faith. Faith infusion. Come, Lord Jesus. Do not delay. Oh man. All right. Well, that's been. Uh, it's been is that it? Been, is that, is that our time? Pretty good time. Okay. Wow. Oh, I hope your uh, September is now almost over. We're coming in October. <laughs> Um, Pumpkin spice lattes. Oh, I love it. Okay, we're out of here. Have a great week. We love you. Peace. <laughs>